This 1050 Ti used to be the fastest low profile video card you could buy. Now there's a low profile GTX 1650 that has that title. How much faster is it? And is it worth upgrading? Let's take a look. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ryan with Escotech. I've got a quick history lesson here going back to 2014 when NVIDIA launched their 750Ti based on their new Maxwell architecture. These cards offered efficiency that had never been seen. It was also the first card without external power to offer respectable performance. Shortly after, low-profile cards launched with similar performance levels. And about two years later, the 1050Ti followed up in the 750Ti's footsteps. Based on NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, the 1050Ti pushed performance and efficiency levels to new heights. After almost three years of being the fastest low-profile card in the world, the 1050 Ti has finally given way to the GTX 1650. Let's compare the specs and then see just how much faster the GTX 1650 is. A quick look at the spec sheet will show the 1650 has newer GDDR6 VRAM, a much higher clock speed, and significantly more CUDA cores. Each of these changes should bring a decent performance increase. I am going to do a quick unboxing of the Gigabyte card that I've chosen to do for this video. And you'll see that it is a dual fan card with a full heat shrink and shroud, which does provide pretty decent cooling for a low profile spec card. Uh, I am going to go ahead and not gigabyte just a little bit for installing the full size bracket on the card. Because let's face it, if you're buying a low profile GPU, you're probably not going to be putting it in a full size case. But that's a pretty minor gripe and me being pretty picky, so let's just go ahead and move on to changing the bracket. The low profile bracket is basically the only other thing that comes with this card aside from some instruction booklet, which let's face it, basically nobody is going to look at. So we'll just put that down and take a look at the low profile bracket. And this is what makes a low profile card a low profile card. It's another term for it is half height, but it doesn't matter how tall the card is, doesn't matter how long it is. Low profile sticks out half as far from the motherboard as a full size card. Old low profile cards used to have a ribbon cable to connect one of the ports. This meant you could lose one of your display outputs. Thankfully this isn't the case anymore. This plate is changed out by unscrewing the VGA screws and there are three screws above each one of the display outputs and then it pops off and goes back on with the low profile bracket in the same orientation. And as you can see now, basically all of the low profile brackets for these cards are two slots high, so you can keep all your ports when you switch it out. You will need a smaller Phillips screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers for the nuts on the VGA bracket and the three screws on the low profile bracket to swap this out. And now you can see that we keep the Two HDMIs, the one display port, and the DVI, and compared to the 1050Ti, we gain one HDMI output on this card. Now let's go ahead and install this card and do some benchmark runs to see how much faster it is in the 1050Ti. I'm using an Inwin CE685 case, which is a great low profile case. Uh, I'm going to do an upgrade video next on the case and make some changes on this. Uh, so go ahead and subscribe if you want to see that. Now I do have to zoom up on one part that makes this case a total pain in the butt. Uh, MSI's motherboard has four little capacitors right by the PCI Express slot on this motherboard. And because they have this little tray bracket on the back for the rear I.O. shields, there's a spot on top of it that stops that. And it makes these cards really, really difficult to get in and out of this case. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and struggle with this here for a minute, but I will get this out eventually. And there is the 1050Ti removed from our case. And let's go ahead and move on to installing the GTX 1650. This motherboard has the open and close slot on the back. I will be sure to leave that open and grab my 1650 and get ready to install it. Be sure to remove any protective covers or plastic that may be in the way of installing your card. And go ahead and get it lined up with your PCI Express slot. This presented more of a challenge because of those capacitors. I actually ended up having to go ahead and bend up the bracket on the back so I could get a better angle to go straight down. But eventually I got my GTX 1650 installed in the case and we are ready to power it up.
Uh, I'm going to start with 3D Mark's Fire Strike. I kind of chose this as my first appropriate benchmark due to the 1050 Ti. Have a little bit of a tough time with this one just to choose a benchmark that's appropriate to both cards. The 1050 Ti recorded a score of 6,559 on Fire Strike, while the GTX 1650 came in with 8,564. This ends up being a 30.5% increase for the GTX 1650, which is a promising result for our first benchmark. And now moving on to 3D Mark's Time Spy, which is one of their more demanding DirectX 12 benchmarks. You can see that the 1050 Ti struggled once again, and it came back with a pretty low score of only 2,477. Whereas the GTX 1650 scored quite a bit better at 3,630, which came back at a 46.5% increase. Again, another good result for the GTX 1650, but this is a pretty demanding benchmark and I wouldn't expect too much out of either one of those cards while running. And now moving on to Unigen's Superposition benchmark. This is their most current DirectX 12 benchmark, which is pretty demanding, and our 1050 Ti was able to score 5,255 on the 1080p medium setting. And moving on to the 1650, scored 7,022, which was again an increase pretty close to what we saw with Fire Strike at 33.6%. All of these benchmarks ran at a native 1920 by 1080 I'm going to introduce another variable there with an ultra-wide monitor, and I'm going to run a benchmark on a current AAA title out there, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This was the only benchmark that automatically ran in my monitor's native resolution of 2560 by 1080 This caused the GTX 1050Ti to struggle even more, as it could only put together a average FPS of 29, which basically is unplayable. However, the 1650 was able to put down 66 FPS, which was a 127% increase and took it from really an unplayable with the 1050 Ti to a pretty decent experience with the GTX 1650. I think this result alone is probably justification to upgrade to a GTX 1650 if you currently have a 1050 Ti. The last performance comparison I want to do is encoding a video in Premiere Pro. The GTX 1650 has a new and improved hardware encoder, and while it's not the new Turing based encoder, it still does a much better job than the 1050 Ti at encoding this video. I used my last YouTube upload, which was my Optiplex 7020 CPU cooler upgrade, and the GTX 1050 Ti did it in 5 minutes and 58 seconds, but with the 1650 installed, it time went down to 415. And while this isn't a game changer, for me or anybody that creates any video content, this would probably be just under the perk of having a GTX 1650. I'm going to conclude my video with a uh, quick look at power and noise. You can see that 53 decibels is our reading with the case closed, and we're pulling 174 watts, and those readings were taken at full load using OCCT. And directly by the 1050 Ti, we're getting a reading of 57.8 decibels. And now with the GTX 1650 at full load, we are a couple decibels louder with the case closed at 55 decibels, and we're pulling about 10 more watts at 184 watts currently from the wall. And directly next to it, we're also a few decibels louder, actually close to 5 decibels louder at 62.5 decibels. But cooling and noise are never going to be the strong suit of a low profile card with typically 60 millimeter fans. And I am going to address the cooling in the case to see if I can get those fans to quiet down a little bit. Um, I'm going to add some fans and some mesh to get better airflow in here. So if you're interested in seeing an Inwin C685 upgrade, go ahead and click the subscribe button. That's it for this video, so thanks for watching and we will see you next time.